thousand dollars last year as a student, and I think that's pretty fired up. Um, I paid more than my parents did. Uh, either way, he's uh, one of our favorite show uh, team reps, and he's going to be talking about uh, secrets to selling sets. Uh, one thing I love about uh, Ethan is just his ability to think big. He plays big, and he wins big too. Now I got 911 on, uh, on my phone, ready to hit send, because often what happens when Ethan talks. That there's like so much smoke coming from people's pens and papers that like I don't know. Last time they called the fire department on us, so don't worry. They know they know it's about to happen. But uh, either way, pen and paper out. You definitely don't want to miss anything he's about to say. Let's give him some energy. Bring on up Ethan Benjamin. Thank you, Ethan. Thanks for that intro, Henry. What's going on, everybody? I'm excited to, uh, to deliver this talk to you guys today. I'm excited to deliver the goods. I know in the manual it is uh, it's titled Set Selling Secrets, and of course I'm gonna talk about Set Selling Secrets, but I'm really just excited to kind of teach you guys how to rip it up this summer and how to actually increase that income and, and increase that average order and that, that set selling ability. So right off the bat, I'm gonna come out hot. Right off the bat, I'm gonna give you the best tip that I can possibly give you. Right off the bat. This has nothing to do with selling sets, but this is the best tip I'd be able to give you. Like you need to know how to keep that demo schedule full. Like you need to know how to keep that demo schedule action packed. Like forward demos is the most important part of this business. Like, I, like I'm so scared to see what Stacy Barton's gonna do with this SC1 push because she has like 24 demos and I have like two and like she's gonna crush me, I know it. But forward demos is the only thing that matters, right? It's too many, obviously I'm gonna give a talk on selling sets, but too many reps focus on selling sets and not enough actually focus on actually what it takes to keep a demo schedule full. So the biggest tip I can give you right off the bat is know how to keep a demo schedule full and make more phone calls than the head receptionist at your office. Think about what receptionists do. I know some of you guys are new, but think about what receptionists do. They're just gonna show up, they're just gonna make hundreds of phone calls, they're not gonna think twice about it, there's no emotional attachment to the results, they're just gonna show up and make the calls, right? If you do that as a rep, not only are you gonna keep a demo schedule Lively, but you're also going to keep demo schedule full, and, you, and you're going to you're going to be crushing the business and be making thousands of dollars a week. So again, four demos is the only thing that matters. So again, start the talk, guys. Write this down. When people see value, they give money. When people see value, people buy. Right? Right now in America, homes right now aren't aren't buying because the perceived value is lower than the price. Automobiles are selling right now in America because the perceived value is, is greater than the price. Blueberries. Some prices, blueberries are gonna sell, some prices, higher prices they're not gonna sell. It's like, how do I get Mrs. Jones to want that homemaker, or want that blueberry, want that house, right? But guys, you gotta get sold. Think about the investment of Cutco. Actually think about the homemaker plus eight set. It, Cutco is one of the only products that doesn't depreciate, it only appreciates, right? Like if you're about to put money on a deal, on an investment, and you're like, and you have absolute certainty that there's zero chance of this deal depreciating and 100% of chance of it appreciating, you're gonna make the deal, right? Like as somebody who bought a homemaker set 40 years ago for 400 bucks, that homemaker set is now worth 1200 bucks. Think about that deal, think about that investment. But guys, you gotta be completely sold on Cutco as a value and a service. So ask yourself, am I completely sold on Cutco? Because if you are, your average order and your set selling availability is gonna go up right away automatically. So, really quick, just a little, quick little plug. Everyone needs to do this before their next demo. The first ultimate set I ever sold, I did this before the demo, and everybody needs to be doing this, okay? Before your next demo today, roll up like five to 10 minutes early. When you're chilling your car, instead of like going on Facebook or shooting a text or whatever you're doing, just go on Cutco's website, scroll to the ultimate set with table knives, you are gonna see 47 reviews. Every single one of those reviews, the ultimate set is five stars. This is a 24, this, this set retails for 24.99, and every single one of those reviews is five stars. And like, Cutco doesn't filter these people out. These are our actual customers. And like, people are just ranting, raving over this $2,500 set of knives. And it's crazy, if you, if you actually read what they're saying, pe like, it really, it's almost weird where people are just like, like this one guy talks about a cuckoo, his, a cuckoo withdrawal where he was married, they had a homemaker set, and you know they got a divorce, the, the wife took the knives, and he went through this withdrawal of having good knives, so he ended up just buying the homemaker set. But like there's story after story 
So before your next demo, just browse through it, read every single review, and your product conviction in Cutco is gonna go through, through the roof. When I did that the first time, I sold an ultimate set, right? So just, just a quick little plug. So guys, you have to see the investment, right? You have to see the investment in Cutco, right? When, when price exceeds value, people buy. I wanted this watch more than I wanted the money in my pocket, right? If I give uh, uh, 50 cents to a homeless guy, what was it worth me to give him 50 cents? It was, it was worth more than the 50 cents in my pocket, right? Or I wouldn't have given it to him. I wanted him to walk away more than I wanted my 50 cents, right? So when people buy and you say, you know, hey, Mrs. Jones, the homemaker's 1,200 bucks, you have to understand that the price is 1,200 bucks, but the value is all the way up here. Because it's worth it, guys, right? 1,200 bucks to the homie? No, no, in my mind, that's like 12 grand, right? So guys, handle objections. We're gonna just jump in right and handle objections. It was like a smooth transition, but we're just gonna do it. So, write this down. Attack objections before they come up. Attack them before they come up. What I mean by that is you can handle any objection before it even comes up, right? The two, the two expensive objections. Mrs. Jones, the real reason why people get Cutco, the real reason why Donna and, and Joy and, and Susan all have sets of Cutco isn't because it's cheap. But Mrs. Jones, cheap stuff isn't good, good stuff isn't cheap. Like, like you're gonna be using this stuff for the rest of your life. But we have this super, super, super easy, super affordable easy pay, where it's so affordable, even myself as a college kid, could still afford to swing any set today if I really wanted to. Like, like tell me, like, like tell me you can't afford cut. I just told you I'm a broke college kid and I can afford any set today, right? <laughs> so, handle objections. Guys, this is like the, the, this best, this next nugget is the best. No, not good at all. So, the mine eyes are fine objection, right? You're cutting the rope, right? 20, 30, 40, 50 strokes. This is what most reps don't do and what you need to do, right? Compliment them on their knives. Okay, compliment them. Mrs. Jones, 52 strokes? That was the best I've seen all week. Like, like Sally's handles down the street took 75 strokes. Like, like, like high five, Mrs. Jones, good job. Think about what that does to actually for reframe their perception of the cut though. When you talk about, hey, you did a really good job, and, and she kind of feeling embarrassed that her knives are inadequate, and then you hit her with a hearty slicer that cuts through in half a stroke, and she's just amazed, right? And then one thing I love doing demos is, Mrs. Jones, do it again. Mrs. Jones, do it again. Mrs. Jones, cut, cut through the rope again. Like, do it again, Mrs. Jones. Like, what is going through Mrs. Jones's mind? Like, wow, that was freaking amazing. Like, this knife is amazing. Like, I'm gonna buy this rope, the, this kit, you know, this knife from this college kit. Like, that's what's going on through her mind. Right? Now this is the this is the most money tip, right? After you cut through the rope. Mrs. Jones. Everyone I sit down with already has knives, but very few people think of their knives as a tool. But a knife is just a tool that's handcrafted, specifically engineered to cut, right? So Mrs. Jones, let's say we went downstairs, we got into your car. You put the key in the ignition and you turned it and it didn't start. And you turned it and it didn't start. And you turn and turn and turn and turn. And finally on the 50 second stroke or turn, your car fires up. Would you say it works? No, you get a fix. Mr. Jones, you just told me you cook five to six nights a week, four weeks a month, 12 months a year, for the next 20, 30, 40 years? Like, does it even make sense to have knives that don't cut, Mrs. Jones? You guys like that? Yeah. Woo! We like that. <laughs> you like that? <laughs> I'm gonna repeat that. Hey, Mr. Jones. Everyone who sits down with already has knives, but very few people think of their knives as a tool, but a knife is really just a tool that's handcrafted specifically engineered to cut. So Mr. Jones, if we were to go downstairs, get in your car, and you put the key to the ignition and, and turn it, and it didn't start, and you turn it, and it didn't start, and you turn and turn and turn, and on the 40th turn, your car fires up, would you say it works? No. Mrs. Jones, and you just exaggerate how often they told you they cook. Mr. Jones, you just told me you cook like two, three, two, three nights a week, four weeks a month, 12 months a year, for the next 30, 40, 50 years? Like, Mrs. Jones, don't you think you deserve that amount that actually cut? And if you don't actually feel that way, let that resonate for a second. Like, your customers are gonna be cooking more than anything else they do in their entire lives. Like, like Mrs. Jones, this isn't gonna be something you're gonna be using every once in a while. Like, you're gonna be using this stuff more than Tiger Woods uses his golf clubs. <laughs> like, Mrs. Mrs. Jones, we all heard about like how Mr. Jones spent like 1,500 bucks on golf clubs, right? Oh. Mrs. Mrs. Jones, does your husband golf? Yeah, how, how much were his golf clubs? Oh, 1,500 bucks? Well, oh, he, he probably golfs like, you know, five, six nights a week, right? No, he, he golfs like twice a month. 
Mr. Jones, you're supposed to golf twice a month, and you have $1,500 golf clubs that work perfectly fine, and you cook five to six nights a week, four weeks a month, 12 months a year for the next 20, 30 years? Like, Mr. Jones, come on, that's got you a step knife that actually cut, right? <laughs> guarantee if I'm doing a demo and Mrs. Jones is there and Mr. Jones is not there and I'm kind of feeling like she's going to throw an objection at me that she needs to talk to her husband, I'm going to, I'm going to throw this on her. Hey, Mrs. Jones, like, hey, I know your husband doesn't know I'm here. I know he probably, you know, didn't even know about this. I know you probably even forgot about me coming over today. And like, I know you probably like didn't think you're going to buy anything, but now you probably want these things. But I don't want you to get you in trouble, Mrs. Jones. Like, I don't want you to buy today. I just want you to try it now. We have a sample program, you try it out for 15 days. I give all my customers 30 days to try it out. And you throw them my easy pack, right? I just want you to try it out. And even if they say like, oh, I still gotta talk to my husband, I'm just gonna look disappointed, like Mrs. Jones, come on. Like, do you really think your husband's gonna be that, you know, mad at you if you put down a fully refundable deposit for something you're gonna be using every single day, day in and day out, week in and week out, right? Everyone understand me on that? Ask rejection before they come up. The next thing. Have confidence that your solution is best. Have confidence that your solution is best. A money line when it comes to this is my belief outweighs your doubt. Your belief in the product needs to outweigh your customer's doubt. That's how sales are made. My belief outweighs your doubt, right? But like, I challenge you to sit down with me for 30 minutes, Mr. Jones, and not buy knives for me. My, my belief outweighs your doubt, right? <clears throat> the person who's always certain always wins. I'm 100% certain. You're so, you're so confident. Yeah, that's right, Mr. James, sign right there. You're gonna love it. <laughs> Are you sure? Like, should I, should I get this out? Yeah, Mr. James, sign right there. 100% certainty. Like, who here has ever seen a movie and you're like, like, I, like it was so motivational. Like, like, Ryan, you gotta see this movie, man. Like, I'm not taking no for an answer. It's so motivational, so inspirational. You're gonna love the movie. Like, you gotta see it. Who here thinks that they could get their friend to see the movie? Well, when you're selling Cutco the right way, it's just like getting your friend to see the movie, right? Get Mrs. Jones to see the movie. Guys, it is, honestly, it's like my, it's like arguing with a fundamentalist in any religion. Like, Mrs. Jones, you just have not seen the light yet. But like, there's like a band, you know, you just haven't seen the light yet, Mrs. Jones. Like, you're not gonna convince me otherwise. And even if they say they can't afford it, I just, I just don't believe them. Like, really, anybody can afford Cutco. If you break a thousand dollar order down on, a, on an easy pack, it's like, it's like what, 200 bucks a month, break that down to roughly like $6 a day. Who here went to Wawa this morning? Like who here got Starbucks this morning, right? You could all afford a homemaker set. I love breaking it down even more. I, like, who, like who has ever done that demo and like little, little like kid like Michael was like so annoying and you can't even like get a word in, right? Who here hates that? Mrs. Jones. I'm sure Mike were over here with all his energy, like he could go, you know, find, find, like a, find like a quarter an hour and he could find himself a homemaker because the homemaker is about 27 cents an hour. That's what it costs. So little Mike over here with all, with all his energy, he could probably afford himself a homemaker if he just went around that house and found a quarter an hour. I, I, I had that happen once. I was doing a demo and this kid was kind of annoying, but uh, his name is Brett. I'm just like, I, I laid that down. This kid, I, I kid you not, like he started going around the house and like every 30 seconds he'd jump up. I found a quarter, I found a quarter, mom. And he had, he had like $3.75. I was just, I was just like crack it up. It was, it was hilarious. <laughs> it was like, I love you, bro. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna, I'm actually just gonna give you some straight demo tips, some straight demo content. I don't have my blue book. Uh, my blue book should be right there. Yeah, perfect. Thanks, Jack. So before every single demo, before I, uh, after, obviously I'll build a little bit of rapport, but before, even after I share goals, before I actually start the demo, you need to be laying this line down on every single customer. Hey, Mrs. Jones, it's gonna sound funny. My goal in the next 20 to 30 minutes isn't necessarily to like sell you a million dollars with the Cutco. Like my goal is honestly just to get you to like me and feel comfortable with me where you really wouldn't mind introducing me to some of your friends. Well, that's like the biggest thing. 
And then a lot of people struggle with referrals. And when you're struggling with referrals, this is the best tip I can, anybody can give you. Tell a story about how somebody hooked you up with referrals right there. Like I'll say, hey, Ms. Jones, my goal is just to get you to like me just so you feel comfortable to just to introduce me to some of your friends. Like Donna Morzulo, do you know Donna? Yeah, everybody knows Donna. Like she was my best customer ever. And it wasn't because she bought a ton. I mean, she bought like two grand from me. But why she was my best customer ever is because she introduced me to 20 of her friends. And I sat down with 12 or 13 of her friends. And I sold 12 or 13 grand to those friends, Mrs. Jones. But those 12 or 13 friends introduced me to my next 120, 130 people. And those 120, 130 people introduced me to my next you know, 500 people. And like Donna doesn't even know this. Well, she knows it now because I thanked her to death. But she just completely revolutionized my business last year. That's a, that's a true story. So just find your own true story about how somebody hooked you up with a ton of referrals and it just, it just helped out your business so much. And tell them. Say, hey, Mr. Jones, by the way, like having sold that stuff again, like if you're like most people, by the end of this demo, you're probably gonna want everything Cutco makes. But since I'm working so hard on this SC1 push period, like all I ask if you are if you are thinking about getting Cutco, or if you are thinking about getting something that catches your eye, whether you're thinking about getting it tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, or talking to your husband about it, or whatever it is, all I ask because I'm literally working so hard is that you try it out today. That is the, num the best one-liner you could ever use. You're dropping so many seeds, dropping a seed for referrals, you're dropping a seed for, sell for buying right now, and we're entering a push period right now, so you could, you could easily use that after you sell your goals. So, I'm just gonna repeat it again, just because it's so funny. Like, hey, Mr. Jones, my goal in the next 10 to 15 minutes, honestly, isn't to sell you a million dollars with the cut cut. Like, my goal is honestly just to get you to like me, just, just so you wouldn't mind introducing me to some of your friends. And like, you don't even have to recommend me to as many like, people as many did. Like, if you could just give me some, that's, that's perfect. I'm not gonna scare him and say 10 people or 20 people, because I know once I get that pen writing, I'm gonna throw out fault joggers and I'm gonna fill up the whole page, right? That's, that's another talk, but I, I just know I'm gonna keep that pen writing with, with powerful fault joggers once they actually do. So I'm not gonna scare him. But yeah, just some of your friends. Like, don't, you don't even have to give me as many as many did. And hey, like, like that's like the that's like the number one thing I'm here for. Like, I don't even care if you get anything, but like, my best customer ever was Don Marzullo. He talked about the story, right? Don Marzullo, she hooked me up. She gave me 20 referrals. Sat down with over 13 of them. Sold to over 13 grand to them. And that's like the softest thousand dollar average order seed you can drop, right? But yeah, if you do see something that catches your eye, all I ask, since I'm working like insanely hard in this SC1 push period, that you that you buy today. I think that's fair, right? So, when I'm actually doing demos, can I have somebody come up here and actually hold my blue book for me? Sorry. Yeah, you don't have to raise your hand. Just come up. This, this is Cutco. This is thanks. This is Cutco. Obviously the knives. The knives are the bread and butter. You know, I'm gonna go two minutes in the knives talking about the knives. I'm gonna go two minutes in the cookware talking about the cookware. I, I know you guys probably don't know about cookware yet. You'll you'll figure it out later. Go two minutes into the flatware. We have all different kind of kitchen stuff, kitchen accessories. Now, Mrs. Jones, like obviously this isn't cheap stuff. I'll probably do a leather cut or do a rope cut right now. Hey, obviously this isn't cheap stuff. Like, this isn't like Target and Walmart stuff. So I don't know if you are familiar with the prices of like buying cutlery. And like, okay, we're, we're comparing to the William Sonoma stuff. So hey, Mr. Jones, if you were to go to William Sonoma right now and you're like, I need a good set of knives, they're gonna recommend you to Wustolf and Shun, right? If I wasn't here selling you Cutco, I'd be here selling you Shun. Shun is an amazing set. As you can see, their best set goes for about 4,000 bucks. You can usually find on sale for 3,000 bucks. Like again, if I didn't know about Cutco, I'd definitely be rolling with Shun. The only thing is why Shun actually costs so much money like you're thinking, you're, if you're paying three grand for knives, you're thinking you're paying for like the most pristine quality and craftsmanship. And, and it's just not the case. Why Shun actually costs me so much money? It's because everything that Shun makes is manufactured in Japan. It goes to manufacturing in Japan, distribution, shipping across seas, receiving here, distribution here, warehousing, wholesaling, distribution again, then to a retail store, then to your kitchen. Like you end up paying for how the set gets to your house, not necessarily for the set itself, Mr. Jones. The coolest thing about Cutco is everything that we make, it actually costs us three times as much to make as what it costs Sean to make their knives. But since everything that we make is made in America, we ship it straight to your kitchen, which eliminates all the middlemen. So most people, I mean, Mr. Jones, most people get their, get their knives the same way I used to get my baseball equipment. 
I used to be a big baseball player, and every single week, I mean, you, some of you guys have been around and heard this, but, um, you know, I, but every single year, I would get the best brand bat, which is my favorite brand, which would be DiMarini, and I'd buy, like, the most expensive bat because I knew I'd be playing baseball, right? People do the same thing when it comes to knives. People just go to Williams Sonoma, equate price for quality, and say, hey, you know what, 3,000 bucks for knives, they must be worth it. Like, most people don't shop vigorously for the best value when it comes to kitchen cutlery. If you are gonna get good stuff, Mrs. Jones, like even if you do cook three or four nights a week, no doubt about it, it should be cup go, right? So, moving on, um, this is a money page as well. You guys should all have this in your blue book. Um, so who here has ever done that demo and they're just like, yeah, but I already have a set of hangers, right? It's like, Mrs. Jones, it's perfect. We actually have, we actually have a, uh, I don't even know how to word it, but we actually have a trade in special, Mrs. Jones. So what you can do is, we'd actually take your hankles from you, we actually give you $100 off a Cutco set, right? And we take your set, we donate to charity, and we get a tax write off of it. So you get $100 off your Cutco set, we take your set, and we donate it to charity. And that's money, and then just, like, I, I totaled my car, like, last year, and I had, like, the guy, like, the guy where, where my car was, he was like, there's so many knives and cookware in my trunk, it, it, was, it was ridiculous. <laughs> like, I had this, I did this lady for um, Kayla Seedman, where I'm like, she had like a really, she had like a thousand dollar set of Henkels, and I did, I told her about this, and she's like, here, take my Henkels, I want Cutco. And now I had just had this brand new set of Henkels, and, you know, and, and she's bought a homemaker from me, so it was, it was perfect. So it'll work out, it'll work out well if you can play it right. So yeah, obviously we're made in America, I'm gonna save you some time. I literally do this, I save some time. Hey, Mrs. Jones, obviously the quality's great. Obviously the scholarship program that I'm working on is amazing. To tell you the truth, the real reason people get Cutco is because the guarantee. Like, the guarantee is insane. It's forever. It really is insane. It's like, it's like, it's multi-generational. You don't need a receipt. If anything ever happens, like, you're good. If it ships, cracks, breaks, you know, splinters, fades, whatever, just the rule to follow, don't throw Cutco away. Like, it's insane. Like, Mrs. Jones, you probably never heard of the Apple waterproof iPhone, right? No. Even a great company like Apple can waterproof every single iPhone, right? But I'm not claiming to know their financials, but I would bet 10 to 15% of Apple's business is just repeat business from, you know, iPhones that died in the water, right? Even a, even a great company like Apple is still based off of planned obsolescence where they just want you to repeat this stuff over and over and over again. The cut go, we just want you to have it once and have it forever and just love it, right? So Mr. Jones, I'm gonna show you the sets. We have three main sets. Um, really, before I even get into it, like if it's a budget thing, Mrs. Jones, you probably really don't need a set. You could probably just get a couple pieces. But Mrs. Jones, if it's not a budget thing, I would be the first one to tell you to get a set. Just because sets are prepackaged, they're practical, they're heavily discounted. A hundred dollar knife in a set's about 70 bucks, and over time that adds up. But yeah, I'm just gonna show you the stuff that you can kind of do whatever you want to do. So obviously, Mrs. Jones, we got the large set. I don't really go into names and uses. Obviously, we got the large, small large set, medium set, small set. So Mr. J the really only sh knives that actually show them are the cheese knife, the hearty slicer, the petite santoku, the orange paring knife, and the shears. And I'll, sh I'll, I'll show the steak knives as well. You guys continue to do your names and uses however you do it, just because you guys are new. Um, but yeah, hey, Mr. Jones. <laughs> hey, Mr. Jones. Um, you probably didn't know this, but like, conserve. Do you guys have cable? Hey, Mr. Jones. Like. Conservatively, if you're spending 100 bucks a month on cable over the next 20 years, you essentially have a $25,000 payment plan with your cable provider. And that's conservative. Like I know a ton of people, most of my customers are spending at least 200 bucks a month on cable, right? And conservatively, over the next 20 years, they have a $40,000 payment plan with their cable provider. Like Cutco, if you break it down, it comes down to like, like over like 40 years, it's like a penny a month. And you're gonna be using stuff all the time. Just a great analogy to throw out. I'm not gonna really go into my clothes, uh, just because it's a little bit different than what you guys do. Uh, just, just follow the manual, just follow pages nine and 10. Um, but the last part of this talk, I think I'm running low on, on minutes right now. Um, what's up? Seven minutes, okay. Give me one sec, my iPad's acting up. Here's just some five like killer questions to ask your customer during a demo. Who's ever had a disengaged customer and when you, you talk about the clothes and they're like, oh, I actually have to make a decision, right? That's, that sucks, right? This is, this, is how, this is how you get away, you know, you handle that. Hey, Mr. Jones, I'm gonna actually save you time. I'm gonna just talk like 10, 15 minutes about this stuff. I'm not gonna do the full demo, but if I do that for you, 
You have to give me your full attention, and I want you to decide for yourself if you think Kepka is worth the investment. Decide for yourself. Like I want them to take ownership to, to actually think if Kepka is worth the investment. Challenge their free will. The second question, is there anything in your house that you use every day that you don't have to replace, you don't have to pay to maintain, and it will always be the best forever? Is there anything in your house that you use every day that you don't that you don't have to replace, you don't have to pay to maintain, and it will always be the best forever? Mr. Jones, the third one. If I could show you how to set a cutco could save you time, money, and energy, how it will definitely fit into your budget today, and how it will definitely be worth the investment, is there anything else that would prevent you from trying out the set today? Mr. Jones, if I could show you how aesthetic cutco could save you time, money, and energy, how it will definitely fit into your budget today, and how it will definitely be worth the investment, is there anything else that would prevent you from trying it out today? I want to hear your objection. Give me your objection, right? Because just, just handle it. Hey, it's definitely be agreeable when you're handling objections, by the way. The best salespeople will stay in agreement the entire demo. You gotta stay in agreement with your clients. Number four, who here has ever had a demo go really well? Like they're awesome people, they're interested in buying, but when you quote, quote the price, they're like 1200 bucks, that's insane. That's ever, has that ever happened to you guys, yeah. right? This, this is how you fix it. You ask them, how much do you think a tool like the super shears are worth when you cut the penny? Like Mr. Jones, how much do you think those super shears are actually worth? If they say 20 bucks, you gotta build some value. If they say 300 bucks, you could probably close right then and there. And again, guys, to wrap it up, the, the, the biggest buying signal a customer can give you is saying yes to an appointment. Like, sit down with me. I ch like, I challenge you, Mr. Jones, to not buy nice for me. Another, another great buying example would be when, when you schedule an appointment at an unusual hour, right? So come over at 10 o'clock, that's a good sign, I'll take that. Basically, you're using all your questions to sell them at the end. Mr. Jones, basically, after everything I told you, and you told me, how you cook, this and that, how you, how you value quality, quality, this is the best bang for your buck. So this is the set for you. And the last part is turning your objections into objectives. So Mrs. Jones says, uh, that's too many knives. Oh, Mrs. Jones, I totally agree. This set does have too many knives. Would you say our objective is to find you a set that completes all of your needs, but in a similar block with less tools? Perfect, Galley set. Too expensive, so Mrs. Jones, would you say our objective is to find you a set that suits all your needs, but that's easier on your budget? Smaller set. And to wrap it up, guys, uh, I, don't, I don't have much more, but guys, you either made the sale or you didn't. I know this is an advanced training tip, but I, I just love this tip. It's either you sell them or they sell you. You know, I've, I've went through the three days of training. I've went through advanced training. I've given many talks, read many books. I just know I'm gonna be able to close Mrs. Jones. She won't be able to close me. So it's either you made the sale or you didn't. Thanks. Woo!